God or no God, Islamic Viewpoint versus Atheist Viewpoint, Part 2. QRNIC Insights One Quranic verse gives a powerful argument to convince humans that they must have a creator who created them. Were they, humans, created by nothing or were they themselves the creators? Quran 52 35 Or have they been created without a creator to create them? Or are they their own creators? The existence of a creation without a creator or a creation which creates itself is impossible. So why do they not worship their own creator? Surah Atar 35 And brought this entire universe into existence. Or did they create the heavens and the earth? Rather, they have no certain knowledge. Quran 52 36 Or did they create the heavens and the earth? But they do not have conviction that Allah is their creator. If they had been convinced of that, they would have declared his oneness and brought faith in his messenger. Surah at 36 It is a fact that something does not come from nothing. Since something exists, and since nothing can create itself, a creator is necessary to explain it. Logically, humans exist, and the heavens and earth also exist. Humans either created themselves, nor did they create the heavens and earth or the laws and phenomena of nature. They all must have a creator a creator who is himself self-subsistent, and not himself a created being. God's Essence In Islam, knowledge of God is not an area of conjecture or personal opinion. The only way to the knowledge of God is through the guidance of revelation. Only God can disclose information about himself, who he is and what he is like. Humans could never discover this knowledge on their own. In the Quran, God describes himself as follows. Vision comprehends him not, but he comprehends all vision. Quran 6 103 O people, the being that has those divine attributes is your Lord. You have no Lord besides him, and there is no one worthy of worship besides him. He is the creator of everything, so worship him alone as he is the only one deserving of worship. He takes care of everything. Vision cannot encompass him, but his vision covers and encompasses all things. He is the one who is subtle with his righteous servants and is aware of them. Clear proofs from your Lord have come to you, O people. Whoever understands them and is mindful, the benefit of that will return to him. Whoever is blind to them and unmindful, it will only be to his loss. It is not my duty to watch over you and record your actions. I am only a messenger from my Lord. He is the one who watches over you. Just as I explained the various types of proofs of my power, I also explained the various types of ayahs containing promises, threats, and advice. And so the idolaters will say, This is not revelation, it is merely something you learned from the people of the scripture before you. And I did this in order to explain the truth to the believers of the nation of Muhammad, peace be upon them, as they are the ones who are the truth and follow it. Surah Al Anam, 102 105. And, Put not forward similitudes for God. Quran 16 hours 74 minutes. These idolaters worship, besides Allah. Idols who have no power to provide them with any provision from the heavens or the earth, and they will never be able to do so because they are inanimate objects that have no life or knowledge. So O people do not make similarities for Allah from these idols that do not benefit nor harm. Allah has no likeness that you can associate with him in worship. Allah knows the attributes of majesty and perfection that are his and you do not know that and as a result you ascribe partners to him and claim that your idols are similar to him. Allah, may he be glorified, strikes an example to refute the idolaters. A bonded slave that is unable to do anything and who has nothing to spend as compared to a free person to whom we have given from our side lawful wealth that he uses as he wills and spends from it. Secretly and openly as he wills. These two men are not equal. How then do you make Allah who is the owner of everything, who spends in his dominion and does what he wills, equal to those powerless idols? Praise be to Allah who is deserving of all praise. Rather, most of the idolaters do not know that Allah is single in his divinity and that he alone deserves to be worshipped. Surah Nal, 73-75 And, there is nothing whatever like unto him. Quran 42, 11 Instead, these idolaters have taken allies whom they align with besides Allah. Allah is the true protector. Others besides him can bring no benefit nor harm. He gives life to the dead by resurrecting them for reckoning and recompense. He has power over all things and nothing is outside his ability. May he be glorified. 
Whatever you, O people, differ in about the principal and secondary matters of your religion, the judgment for that rests with Allah. And his book and the tradition of his messenger, peace be upon him, must be used as a reference. The one who possesses these attributes is my Lord. It is on him that I rely in all my affairs and it is to him that I turn by repenting to him. Allah is the creator of the heavens and the creator of the earth without any precedent. He made for you from amongst your own kind spouses. He also made for you pairs of camels, cattle and sheep, so that they can multiply for your sake. He creates you through the spouses that he made for you by your marrying one another. He provides livelihood for you through the cattle that he made for you, from their meat and milk. Nothing of his creation resembles him. He is the one who hears the statements of his servants, and the one who sees their actions. Nothing of that escapes him and he will recompense them for their actions, if good then with good, and if evil then with bad. Ashura 9-11 God's essence, as stated in the Quran, is beyond the scope of human perception and comprehension. The human imagination cannot possibly conjure up what God is like. Imagination consists of fragments of reality already perceived. The human mind cannot imagine beyond what it sees and experiences in the physical world. The picture-making power of the mind is based on observation. God resembles or compares to nothing in this world. It is obvious, then, that the human mind can never know one who is unique, incomparable, and dissimilar to anything in creation. Therefore, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, cautioned mankind in this regard, saying, Ponder about the creatures of God and do not ponder about God himself, his essence, lest you be ruined. The human brain has cognitive, temporal, and spatial limits which it cannot possibly transcend. A sound human intellect can know God's existence, but it cannot know God's essence. God is too exalted to be encompassed by the created finite human mind. Such absolute knowledge of God is impossible, and there only remains for the human being the option of relative knowledge. Humans can never know God's essence, but they can know him through his attributes with which he described himself in the Quran and through his works in the universe. God his glory, power, and grandeur is reflected in nature and throughout his creations, from the blades of grass to the faraway stars. Whatever mental picture you have of God, God is different scholar Ibn Hanbal. Knowing God. 01 Attributes. 02 Fingerprints. Islam teaches that what God's essence is or what he looks like should not be points of concern. Humans can relate to God through the ways in which he has chosen to be known and appreciated. Namely, his attributes as revealed in his divine words and his observable actions and fingerprints all over creation. Attributes Allah God, according to Islam, is not a distant, unconcerned, or silent God. This is abundantly clear throughout the Quran. For example, God declares that in every instant he is nearer to every human being than their jugular vein. And indeed we, God, have created man, and we know what his own self whispers to him. And we are nearer to him than his jugular vein. Quran 50 colon 16 And I have already created man and know what his soul whispers to him, and I am closer to him than his jugular vein. Verily, I created the human and I know the thoughts and desires that pass his mind. I am closer to him than the vein that is present in his neck and connected to his heart. When the two receivers receive, seated on the right and on the left. When the two receiving angels receive his deeds, one sitting on his right, and the other seated on his left. Man does not utter any word except that with him is an observer prepared to record. He does not utter any statement except that there is an angel anticipating whatever he says present. And the intoxication of death will bring the truth, that is what you were trying to avoid. The pangs of death are a reality and will come, there is no escaping from them. O oh, negligent human! That is what you used to turn away from and delay and the horn will be blown. That is the day of carrying out the threat. The angel appointed to blow the trumpet will blow for the second time. That is the day of judgment, the day of the punishment the disbelievers and sinners have been warned of. And every soul will come, with it a driver and a witness. Each soul will come with an angel driving it, and an angel testifying against it for its deeds. It will be said, You were certainly in heedlessness of this, and I have removed from you your cover, so your sight this day is sharp. It will be said to this human who is being driven, verily. In the world you were in neglect regarding this day because of you being deceived by your desires and pleasures. So I have removed your neglect from you by the punishment and horror you see before you. 
your eyesight is sharp today, you now see everything you were neglectful of. And his companion, the angel, will say, This record is what is with me, prepared. His companion, the angel appointed to him, will say, These are his actions I have with me that I present. Without any increase nor decrease. Allah will say, Throw into hell every obstinate disbeliever. Allah will say to the two angels, the driver and the testifier, Throw into hell every stubborn rejecter of the truth. Preventer of good, aggressor, and doubter. Who is frequent preventer of the truth Allah has made obligatory on him, transgressor of the limits of Allah. Doubter in whatever promise or warning he is given. Who made, as equal, with Allah another deity, then throw him into the severe punishment. The one who attributes another deity with Allah and makes him a partner in worship. So throw him into the severe punishment. His Satan companion will say, Our Lord, I did not make him transgress, but he himself was an extreme error. His companion from the Satans will say, proclaiming innocence from him, O oh my Lord! I did not lead him astray. He himself was in deviance, far away from the truth. Allah will say, Do not dispute before me, while I had already presented to you the warning. Allah will say, Do not argue in front of me. There is no benefit in that, because I gave the message to you in the world beforehand with the severe warnings that my messengers brought to you for those who disbelieved in me and disobeyed me. The word will not be changed with me, and never will I be unjust to the servants. The statement cannot be changed with me, and I do not turn back on my promise. I do not oppress my servants by decreasing their good deeds, nor by increasing their evil deeds. Rather, I requite them for whatever they have done. Surah Kaf, 16-29 He certainly knows whatever their bosoms conceal, and whatever they say and do, in public and in private. Nothing is hidden, everything related to them is exposed before his eyes. I am all aware of what you conceal and what you reveal. Quran 60-1 O oh, those who have faith in Allah and act upon what he has legislated for them. Do not take my enemies and your enemies as intimate friends who you befriend and love when they have disbelieved in the religion that has come to you at the hands of your messenger. They also drove the messenger out of his home in Mecca, and drove you out of your homes in Mecca too. They do not consider the bonds of kinship nor blood in your regard, not due to anything except that you have brought faith in Allah who is your Lord. So if you have truly gone out to strive in my path and to seek my pleasure, do not befriend them while also secretly sending the information about the Muslims, out of your love for them. I know better of what you conceal in that regard, and what you disclose, nothing is hidden from me in any case. And whoever intimately befriends and loves the disbelievers has verily strayed from the middle path, deviated from the truth and avoided that which is right. Surah al Mumtahina 1 He hears their words, sees all their circumstances, and knows whatever they are going through or have been through. He is never inattentive or uncaring. So, let them be calm, peaceful, and confident. Fear not, verily. I am with you both, hearing and seeing. Quran 2046 Moses and Aaron peace be upon them, said. We fear that he will quickly punish us before we can deliver your message to him, or that he will exceed the limit in oppressing us by killing us or otherwise. Allah said to them, Do not be afraid, lamb with you both with my help and support. I hear and see everything that occurs between you and him. So go to him and tell him, We are the messengers of your lord O Pharaoh, so send the Israelites with us, and do not punish them by killing their sons and letting their women live. We have brought to you a sign from your lord proving our truthfulness. Safety from Allah's punishment is for those who have faith and follow Allah's guidance. Allah has revealed to us that punishment in this world and the afterlife falls on whoever rejects the signs of Allah and turns his back on what the messengers brought. Pharaoh said, In denial of what they brought, Who then is your lord? whom you claim has sent you to me, O Moses. Moses said, Our Lord is the one who gave everything the shape and form suitable for it, and then he guided all created things to what they were created for. Pharaoh said, What about the previous communities who had disbelieved? Moses, peace be upon him, said to Pharaoh, The knowledge of what those communities did is with my Lord, recorded in the preserved tablet. My Lord does not err in his knowledge of things nor does he forget anything. My Lord is the one who made the earth spread out for you to live on and made for you on it pathways to travel on. He sent down rain water from the sky and with that water he brings forth every kind of plant. Surah Taha, 46-53 He is always close to them, hearing and seeing. 
he responds to the invocation, Dua, of any supplicant who calls upon him, and he answers the prayers of the distressed ones even they are transgressors, sinners, or disbelievers. As long as they seek him alone, stand at his door, and rely on his help. And when my servants ask you, O Muhammad, about me, indeed I am near. I respond to the invocation of the supplicant, Dua, when he calls upon me. Quran 2 186 If they ask you, O Prophet, about how close Allah is and about his answering of prayers, Allah is close to them and knows everything about them. He hears their prayer, and they do not need intermediaries or to raise their voices. Allah responds to the call of whoever calls him sincerely, praying to him. So, let them be devoted to him and his sacred law, firm in their faith. As that is the best route to Allah's response, perhaps in that way they might be rightly guided in worldly and sacred matters. Surah al-Baqarah, 186 And he has angels guarding and watching over each human soul at all times. There is no soul but that it has over it a protector. Quran 86, 4 There is no soul except that Allah has assigned to it an angel to record its deeds for the reckoning on the day of judgment. So let man reflect over what Allah created him from, so that Allah's power and man's inability becomes clear to him. Allah created him from a spurting liquid that is split into the womb. This liquid emerges from between the spinal column of a man and the bones of the chest. He, may he be glorified since he created him from that despised liquid has the power to bring him back to life after death for the reckoning and recompense. On the day when secrets will be tried and the intentions, beliefs etc. that the hearts conceal will be exposed, and the righteous will be distinguished from the corrupt. On that day man will not have any power to protect himself from Allah's punishment, nor any helper to assist him. Allah took an oath by the sky that contains rain, because it comes down from its direction time after time. He took an oath by the earth that cracks open to reveal the plants, fruit and trees in it. This Quran that is revealed to Muhammad peace be upon him, is a word that separates truth from falsehood, and fact from lie. It is not a game in falsehood, but it is serious and the truth. Those who deny what their messenger brought to them plot, and scheme to reject and refute his call. I too plot and scheme to make the religion victorious and to disprove falsehood. So give respite, O messenger, to these disbelievers. Give them respite for a short while, and do not seek to hasten their punishment and destruction. Surah at Tariq, 4-17 God uses many names and attributes in the Quran to describe himself to humanity, such as the Truth, the Holy, the Almighty, the Self-Sufficient, the Guardian, the Bestower, the Compassionate, the Loving, the Wise, the Judge, the Knower, the Avenger of Evil, and the Ever-Forgiving. Humans can understand God's attributes, since they possess or experience them in some manner, in varying degrees, and in a mode appropriate to their human capacities and finite nature. Qualities such as hearing, seeing, compassion, and patience have been woven into their being. They are immediately familiar to them and they can practice them spontaneously, even though only God possesses them in an all-encompassing, absolute manner. So they can use their own attributes as a unit of measurement attributes. Through his divine names and attributes, humans can get a feel for God and his presence. Each name and attribute touches a particular chord, awakens a new consciousness, supplies a different need, engenders a special affection and allows a close and dynamic relationship with God. In a noble Quranic verse, God asks to be sought by his names. To God belongs the most beautiful names, call upon him therewith. Quran 7 180 To Allah, glory be to him, belongs the most beautiful names which show his majesty and perfection. So use them to call on Allah when you ask for whatever you wish for. Also leave those who turn away from the truth of these names by assigning them to false thy ties, or denying them, or distorting their meanings. Allah will repay those who do this with a painful punishment. Among those Allah created are a nation which is guided by the truth, calling others to it so that they are also guided, and through the truth they are just in their judgment. They are the leaders of guidance whom Allah blessed with faith and good works. Those who deny my signs, not having faith in them and rejecting them, I will continue to provide for them in the worldly life, not to honor them, but to lead them on gradually until they go further astray. Then they will be overtaken by the punishment when they do not expect it. I delay the punishment of such people until they think they will not receive a punishment, so they keep increasing in their rejection and disbelief, thus their punishment also increases. My planning is strong I outwardly display to them kindness, but I intend for them to be forsaken. Do those who reject the signs of Allah and his messenger not think about things? 
If they used their minds it would be clear to them that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not crazy. He is a messenger from Allah, who sent him to give a clear warning about the punishment of Allah. Do these people learn nothing from seeing Allah's control of the heavens and the earth, and all the animals and plants and other things that Allah created in them, and their own life spans? The end of which may be near, so that they might repent to Allah before the time has gone. If they do not have faith in the Quran and the promises it contains, what other book will they believe in? Whoever Allah does not guide to the truth, sending them away from the right path, then there is no guide to direct them back to guidance. Allah leaves them in their misguidance and disbelief, wandering blindly, not being guided to anything that will ultimately benefit. Those who reject the truth and proud ask you about the hour, asking when its appointed time is. Say to them, O Muhammad, I do not have knowledge of it, nor anyone else but Allah alone has knowledge of it. Only Allah will reveal its decreed time. Its appearance is hidden from all of those in the heavens and earth, and it will only come upon them unexpectedly. They asked you, O Muhammad, about the hour as if you are eager to know it, not realizing that you did not ask about it because of your knowledge of your Lord. Say to them, O Muhammad, the knowledge of the hour is with Allah alone, but most people do not know this. Say to them, O Muhammad, I do not have the ability to bring good to myself or to remove any harm from myself, except by Allah's will. The dominion of these things belongs to Allah alone, and I only know what Allah taught me. I do not know the unseen Gabe, because if I did, I would have used what I know to serve my own interests, and to protect myself from misfortune, due to knowing about things before they happened. I am only a messenger from Allah, warning of a painful punishment, and bringing good news of Allah's generous reward for a people who have faith, believing that I am a messenger from Him. And in what was revealed to me, it is he who created you from one soul, Prophet Adam, peace be upon him, and created from Adam, peace be upon him, his wife, Eve, creating her from his rib, so he would be close friends with her, and find peace with her. When he had relations with her she became pregnant with a light load, not noticed because it is at the beginning of the pregnancy. A woman continues with the pregnancy going about things without finding it heavy, until she becomes heavy with it when it has grown in her belly, the two of them call upon their Lord, saying, O our Lord, if you grant us a healthy child, we will be thankful for your blessings. But when Allah responds to their prayer, and gives them a healthy child as they asked, they ascribe partners to Allah in what he gave to them when Allah is far above having any partner, and is alone in his divinity. Do they consider these idols and other things to be partners with Allah being worthy of worship, when they know that these idols create nothing? Rather, they were created themselves, so how can they consider them to be partners with Allah in divinity? These things that are worshipped instead of Allah cannot help those who worship them, and cannot even help themselves, so worshipping them is clearly foolish and ignorant. And if you call these idols which you take as gods to guidance, they will not respond to what you call them to, nor can they follow you. It is the same whether you call them, or keep silent, because they are just objects, and are not conscious, they do not hear, and they cannot speak. Those you call upon instead of Allah were created by Allah, and belong to Him, so they are the same as you in that way although you are better in that you are living, and are able to speak and walk. And hear and see, while your idols are not so. Call on them and let them respond to you if you are telling the truth in what you say about them. Do these idols which they take as gods have feet to walk with, or hands to act with and strike? Or do they have eyes to see with, or ears to hear with? If they are incapable of doing these things, how can you worship them, hoping for benefit from them, or to protect yourself from harm? Say, O Messenger, Call upon your partners all together, and plot whatever you will against me, and give me no respite. Truly, my protector is Allah, who keeps me safe, so that I need no one besides him. I fear nothing from your idols, because Allah sent down the book as a guidance to people, and it is he who protects those who do good among his creation, keeping them safe and helping them. Those you call upon, O idolaters, from amongst these idols, are not able to help you, and are not able to help themselves. For they are utterly incapable, unable to do anything. So how can you call upon them instead of calling upon Allah? If you call your idols which you worship instead of Allah to the right path and steadfastness, they will not hear you calling them. You see them facing you with painted eyes, objects that cannot see. For they used to make statues in the form of people and animals, with hands, feet, and eyes, 
but they were just objects, inanimate and unable to move. Accept from people, O oh messenger, what they are able to do, the actions and conduct that is easy for them, and do not require them to do things that are too difficult for them, because that will drive them away. Instruct them to speak in a beautiful way and to do good actions, and turn away from those who are foolish and do not face them in their ignorance, returning like for like. Whoever harms you, do not harm them, and whoever denies you something, do not deny them. And if you feel that Satan is bringing you an evil suggestion or stopping you from doing good, then ask Allah for protection and seek refuge with him. He hears whatever you say, and is aware of you when you seek protection, and he will protect you from him. Those who are mindful of Allah, following what he instructs, and staying away from what he has prohibited, when an evil suggestion comes to them from Satan to do something wrong. They remember the might of Allah and his punishment for the wrongdoers and his reward for those who do good. They turn away from their disobedience, turning to Allah asking for forgiveness, so that they do the right thing, seeing clearly what they were doing wrong, and hold back from doing it. The brothers of the Satans, who commit immorality and disbelieve, are drawn by the Satans into greater error, committing sin after sin. They do not stop in their efforts, either the Satans with their misguidance nor those who are immoral and who follow them, committing evil. And if you, O messenger, come with a sign, they reject it and turn away from it. And if you do not come to them with a sign, they ask why he did not produce one. Say to them, O messenger, it is not up to me to just come with a sign. Rather, I only follow what was revealed to me from Allah. The Quran which I recite to you, an evidence and proof from Allah your Creator, the arranger of your lives, a guidance and mercy for the believers among his creation. As for those who do not have faith, then they are lost and wretched. Surah Al-Iraf 180-203 Such is the forgiving for forgiveness and the healer for healing, using the attribute most appropriate to what humans are asking for. Fingerprints Look for miracles Humans do not need to, nor should they, look for miracles or extraordinary phenomena when they look for God. They need only look within, at their natural selves, and around them, at the natural world, to discover God. A watch implies a watchmaker. The evidence is even stronger for living creatures, from the largest planet down to the most microscopic creature, as their design is far more brilliant and complex. So a world implies a world maker, God. The miracles of God's creations are as manifest in the smallest as in the most gigantic of his works, in the construction of an ant as in that of an elephant, in the complex structure of cells as in that of galaxies, in deep, tiny, underwater crevices as in rushing rivers and high mountains, and in the warbling of birds as in the roaring of thunder. The whole of the cosmos, being continuously filled and emptied of living beings, stands as a comprehensive sign of its creator and a vast, inexhaustible book describing its single author. The Quran in hundreds of verses does not merely ask, but provokes and appeals to the eyes, ears, and minds to open up to the universe and think of its wonders in order to know God. One such motivational verse of the Quran says, Verily, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, in the alternation of the night and the day, in the sailing of the ships through the sea with that which profits humankind, in the rain which God sends down from the sky, with which he revives the earth after its death and spreads in it every kind of moving creature, and in the veering of the winds and the clouds which are held between the sky and the earth, there are signs for people who use reason. Quran 2 164 The following are clear signs of the oneness of Allah, glory be to him, for those who understand the evidence and proof, the creation of the heavens and the earth, and the wonders in them. The succession of night and day, the passing of life and death, happiness and sorrow, wealth and poverty. Ships that sail through the waters of the sea, carrying food, clothing, trade and other things that people need and which benefit them. Water that Allah sends down, bringing the earth to life with the agriculture and pasture that grows in it, and the living creatures he spreads out in it. The changing of the winds from one direction to another, and the clouds, controlled between the sky and the earth. Surah Al-Baqarah, 164 What makes humans different from other creatures is their need to be intellectually convinced. The Quran constantly appeals to reason and abounds with verbs that urge humans to acquire knowledge through reliance on the mind, and also the senses through careful observation. Such verbs include tafakkur, contemplation, tadabur, deliberation, tabasur, insight, tadhakar, remembrance, tafak, comprehension, takal, reasoning, nazar, contemplative looking, itabar, deriving lessons, and understanding science. Do they not look into the realm of the heavens and the earth and everything that God has created? Quran 7 185 
Do these people learn nothing from seeing Allah's control of the heavens and the earth, and all the animals and plants and other things that Allah created in them, and their own life spans? The end of which may be near, so that they might repent to Allah before the time has gone. If they do not have faith in the Quran and the promises it contains, what other book will they believe in? Surah Al-Araf 185 Do they not look, by way of reasoning and conclusion, into the realm of the heavens, including the sun, the moon, the stars, and the sky, and the earth, including the forests, the oceans, the mountains, the animals, the birds, the insects, and the trees, and everything that God has created, all the incalculably, innumerably, infinitely myriad creatures of God which fall under the umbrella term, things. Quranic Interpretation by al qasimi Mahasan al tol The Quran reminds that creation speaks of the Creator. Though God is invisible, His existence and aspects of His character are revealed through His work. In the earth are neighboring plots, gardens of vineyards, crops, and date palms, growing from the same root or alone. They are all watered with the same water, yet we, God, make some better tasting than others. Surely, in that are signs for people who reason. Quran 13,4 Allah is the one who made the heavens high without any supports that you can see. Then he established himself on the throne, and he subjugated the sun and the moon for the benefit of his creation. Both the sun and the moon run along for a specified period of time that is known only to Allah. He, may he be glorified, disposes of all matters in the heavens and the earth as he wills. He explains the signs that indicate his power in the hope that you may be certain about meeting your Lord on the day of judgment, and prepare for it by doing good actions. He, may he be glorified, is the one who spread out the earth and created on it firm mountains so that it does not cause the people to become unsettled. From all types of fruit he made two kinds, like the male and female in animals. He draws the veil of night over the day so that it becomes dark after being bright. In that which is mentioned, there are signs and proof for a people who reflect and ponder over Allah's creation, for they are the ones who benefit from such signs and proof. On earth there are neighboring plots, gardens of vineyards, crops, palm trees sharing one root and others with individual roots. All of these gardens and crops are watered with the same water. I make some of them better than others in taste and other benefits despite their being next to one another and being watered with the same water, there are signs and proof for those who reason. For they are the ones who pay heed to it. If you are amazed, O messenger, at anything, then you should surely be amazed at their denial of resurrection and their statement of proof for their denial. What? When we die and become dust and decayed and decomposed bones, shall we be resurrected and restored to life? Those who reject the resurrection after death are the ones who disbelieved in their Lord and as a result they disbelieved in His power to resurrect the dead. They are the ones around whose next chains of fire will be placed on the day of judgment. They will be the inhabitants of the fire, and they will remain there forever, without ever ceasing to exist and without their punishment coming to an end. The idolaters ask you, O messenger, to bring on the punishment, and they inquire as to why it is taking so long to come on them before they completely enjoy the favors that Allah has decreed for them. Many such punishments have come before on people like them from the nations who disbelieved. Why do they not take a lesson from them? Your Lord, O Messenger, is one who pardons people despite their wrongdoing. He, therefore, does not rush to take retribution from them giving them a chance to repent to Allah. He is truly severe in punishing those who persist in their denial if they do not repent. Those who disbelieved in Allah persisting in their rejection and obstinance say, Why has no sign been sent down to Muhammad from his Lord, just as was sent down to Moses and Jesus? You, O Messenger, are only a warner who warns people of Allah's punishment. You only have signs that Allah has given you. Every community has a prophet who shows them and guides them to the path of truth. Allah knows what every female bears in her womb. He knows everything about it. He knows about any shrinking, swelling, health or illness that occurs in the womb. By him, may he be glorified, everything is determined with a measure that will either decrease nor increase. Surah Ararade, 2-5 Done with Allah's help and grace.